Good evening. I want to welcome everybody to the Dayton Unit NAACP 2018 annual meeting. Uh, you know, I greet you on behalf of all of the members, uh, you know, across the great uh, Dayton Unit NAACP, NAACP spectrum. Uh, you know, we are a very proud organization, seven year in a row, um, Thalheimer Award winner, that's the highest award that any local unit can receive from the NAACP nationally. But it's because, yes, go ahead. But it's because of all of the citizens in Dayton, Ohio, that has helped us do what we do as an organization. So with that, we're gonna open up it with a word of prayer, and uh, we're gonna ask that our first vice president uh, lead us in an open word of prayer, as well as to bless the food. Let us pray. Our Father God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we come this hour in this time. We thank you, first of all, Lord, for allowing us to be able to come out here to this gathering. And Lord, we pray for those who are here today. And Lord, we just thank you that you've uh, been able to be with us throughout the year, 12 months, and here we are as we get ready to close out our session NWC session for this year. And we give you all praises, glory, and honor. And Lord, we ask your continued blessing upon all our leaders here, our president and his cabinetry, and all those ones that are involved in doing what we can do to make this better, uh, a better city and a better place for everyone as we challenge them on certain issues for an unfairness. And Lord, we just pray for this meeting this evening, that everything we do, we do it decent and in order. And that when we leave here, Lord, you'll be proud and of what we do and let us, you know, uh, be on one accord. And Lord, as we come together later to break bread and eat a physical food, we ask your blessing upon it, that it may be nourishment to our bodies and that it would provide us with the strength and health that we need to continue to do your will. And in Jesus' name, we ask all these blessings. Amen. All right, thank you. So if you did not receive an agenda, uh, the agendas are located uh, back to my left uh, if you did not receive one. So you see the agenda, and um, the Bible says to pray for your leaders, which we had an opportunity to just do. Uh, and uh, we want to make certain that each one of you, uh, as you are in leadership positions in your respective uh, rights, in the organizations that you lead, that, uh, that each one of you all are leaders, and we want to make certain that any and everything we do we start off with prayer as we just did. In terms of our meeting norms, uh, our meeting norms has not changed. This report will be on our website. So probably tomorrow, if you want to go out and take a look at this report in its entirety, you will have an opportunity to do that. Uh, what is our vision? Uh, and our vision is to fulfill the dream of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 by capitalizing on the second A of the NAACP, which stands for what? What does it stand for? Advancement. Advancement. It says the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. So that is our vision. So this time we're going to have our secretary to come up and do the reading of the minutes. Madam Secretary Claire Thompson. Armed Services and Veterans Affairs Committee presentation was on Monday, November the 26th of 2018. The meeting started at 6.08 p.m. Prayer was offered by Herman Branham. Roll call of attendance was read by Madam Secretary Claire Thompson along with the previous minutes. President Ford moved for the adoption for the reading of the minutes. Deborah Smith so moved. C.K. Williams second, the motion carried. Treasurer's report. Treasurer Cedric McGee read October's budget report of 2018. Treasurer Cedric McGee moved for the adoption of the budget report. Tom Roberts second, the motion carried. Vice President's report. Third VP Willie Terrell was unavailable for reporting. Second VP Tom Roberts, there was no written report, but he always provides a verbal. Suggested to the community to write U.S. Senators concerning opposition, concerning stand your ground, laws that were recently passed. Tom Roberts conveyed he has an interest in recruiting more youth for the AXO committee. Roberts also conveyed how delighted he was of the voters' turnout and the part that the NAACP played in getting the community to the polls. 
Roberts took time out to, to thank various committees and groups throughout the area for participating in the effort. Roberts expressed his elation of the voters outpouring help in getting the House of Representatives back under the control of the Democratic Party. First VP Robert, Reverend Herman Branham, there was no written port report, but he too also provided a verbal, expressed his joy about the voter turnout. President's report. President's report is always available for the public. Dr. Forward requ requested that the committee chairs send information about when they are out in the community participating in activities that reflect community support and initiatives. The information will keep the NAACP's website, what? Fresh. Dr. Derek Forward announced the annual meeting to be held Monday, December the 17th of 2018 at 6 p.m. Dr. Ford requests that the executive committee chairs go to the NAACP website to complete the presidential survey. President Ford moved for the adoption of the report. Herman Brannon accepted. Tom Roberts second. The motion carried. Old business, there was none by the executive committee. New business, there was none by the executive committee. The general public, the topic, would like to see African language brought into the school system. Another topic that was brought up would like to have open forum with the police concerning comments made by about Colin Kaepernick. Nicole Miller, RTA driver representative, spoke about future upgrades with the company to make commutes smoother, faster, and more convenient for the riders. Dr. Derek Ford asked the community to take time out and browse the NAACP website to keep it fresh. Updates. Meeting adjourned at 6.43, and that will conclude the reading of the minutes. Uh, you heard the reading of the minutes. Uh, I entertain a motion to accept and or receive the minutes. Moved by Chair Lady Hill. Second by Chairman Ayo Ngundu Yule. Questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, motion carried. Treasurer's report. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, the treasurer's report for the month of November, our regular membership, $300. Life membership, $200. Our freedom fund, $14,950. Uh, scholarships, $1,000. And that totals 16000 uh, a, a monthly income of $16,450. Our expenses for the month is $43,186. And this leaves us with an expense distance of $26,736. With a balance in the bank of $126,000. $790.19 as of the end of November. That is my report. Uh, I'd like to move for the uh, adoption of my report. Second. It's been probably moved and second, uh, second by Assistant, Tre second, Assistant Treasurer Jamie Rippey. Uh, questions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Those opposed, motion carried. Uh, Treasurer McGee, uh, do you want to kind of explain to people about this right here? So I just uh, uh, went over the financial report. And as treasurer, what I do is I submit an annual financial report to the NAACP Finance Department on a timely basis. I provide transparent information to organizations, stakeholders, members, community, business, and government agencies so potential donors can understand the organization's business and how well resources are being managed. I've worked with President Ford and the Finance Committee to develop an annual budget as well as exercise good stewardship within the organization regarding the revenue and expenses occurred against the initial budget. And I've prepared monthly statements for organization members. I've stayed knowledgeable of the organization's financial policies in accordance with the NAACP's constitution and bylaws. 
for the unit. Thank you, Treasurer McGee. And um, as you're going to hear inside of my report, as it relates to the work that he has done and his financial stewardship, you're going to be able to see uh, how, even before him, because we're going to date back uh, you know, to the President's report as it relates to 2007. So, uh, President's report. Okay, so, uh, so with the President's report, if I can find it here. Uh, there is a budget surplus of uh, $76,142 uh, from January 1, 20, 2007 uh, you know, to the end of uh, November 30th, 2018. So from a financial stewardship standpoint, uh, working very closely with the Finance Committee, uh, those are the kind of results that we have delivered this organization uh, during uh, my tenure in office. Uh, personally, I've raised over uh, close to $14,000 in membership money, uh, November 30th, 2018. Uh, I recommend that the transportation, room expenses, food costs, and other miscellaneous expenses be paid for the President and First Lady Ford to attend an annual meeting next year in February. Uh, that is an annual meeting that, uh, that we go to every year. Uh, you held a meeting with the DPS Interim Superintendent Elizabeth Lobley. Uh, and the education chair lady Loretta Williams to discuss proposed school closures. You may have remembered that from early on, conducted a listening forum with concerned citizens, administrators, teachers, parents, and students to receive input from their perspective. Uh, provided their collective recommendations to the Dayton School Board. So actually went before the Dayton School Board to, pro to provide a very comprehensive plan that the sit and you know, that citizens came up with uh, from all across the spectrum of uh, our community. We organized a meeting on Tuesday, January 9th, 2018 with representatives of Audi, Incorporated, Springfield Division, uh, Neighborhood Over Politics, who's represented here this evening, uh, Northwest Priority Board, Miami Valley Co Organizing Collaborative, and the Dayton Unit NAACP to discuss future closing of Audi West Town Shopping Center location. Uh, while we were not able to save the Audis, but you're going to hear a victory that came out as a result of that a little bit later on. Uh, on behalf of the citizens uh, of the city of Dayton and throughout Montgomery County, Ohio, you know, organized a meeting with representatives of the Premier Health, SCLC in Dayton, Northwest Priority Board, members of the Dayton Unit in the place being over 200 community stakeholders to have open dialogue regarding the future closing of Good Samaritan Hospital. Uh, the community forum was held on Saturday, February 10th, 2018 at Zion Baptist Church. And that is something that we're still um, advocating for, uh, Good Samaritan Hospital. And also met with the Career De Development uh, Services Director of the Dayton Job Center, along with their business community liaison, to, to conduct a tour and speak with many students at the Dayton Job Corps about the NAACP. Uh, I would encourage any and everybody to go and visit uh, the Dayton Job Corps, you know, they have some dynamic programs up there from citizens and, you know, for the youth that's up there participating. And um, it's a very nice campus, and I would encourage you to go up there and spend some time with those students if you have an opportunity. Organize a legislative, legislative day meetings on uh, March 16, 2018 with Congressman Mike Turner, along with Hillary O'Shilden, our Senior Vice President for Advocacy and Policy and Director of our NAACP Washington Bureau. I also met with the office staff of Congressman Al Green and Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee to ask them about uh, serving as keynote speakers of our Freedom Fund Bank. But however, we did end up having a, a phenomenal speaker. Uh, we didn't get one of them, but we did have, uh, well, you'll hear that later on during the other report. Uh, organized a meeting with interim Trotwood Superintendent Tyrone Overson, along with second VP Tom Robertson, education chair Loretta Williams, to discuss Trotwood Skitty Schools path forward as the state takeover hung in the balance. And as we know, that state takeover did not happen, uh, and we're happy about that. And now we're working with Dayton Public Schools very vigilantly to ensure that it doesn't happen to Dayton Public Schools in the future. Uh, so with that, uh, I move for adoption of my report with said action item. Uh, moved by first VP Branham. I heard a second by uh, Burnett Deku. Questions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Those opposed? Motion carried. 
Uh, First VP Branham. On my uh, religious affair report, as you can see there on the screen, I work with the Dayton Baptist uh, Pastors and Ministers Union here in Dayton, Ohio, to seek their involvement with the Dayton Union NACP. I moderated a, uh, I moderated uh, here uh, a monthly community meeting uh, back here, I think it was in, well, March or April, and it was titled Juveniles male violence and crime because we have a lot of that's going on within our community and outlining areas. Also, I helped plan the 2000 men march against domestic violence in West Dayton and participated in a meeting about the closing of Audi's a grocery store in the West Town Shopping Center. I served as a guest on a Dayton NATP uh, uh, update TV show to discuss the pros and the cons of owning a minority, uh, a, a minority business, participated in a news conference to voice the Dayton Unit NACP support of issues one and six, Partic participated in a news conference with state legislators concerning the proposed demolition of Good Samaritan Hospital, and also provided rides to the polls on election day and also made calls to remind people to go to vote and uh, these people they was very uh, excited and happy that uh, they saw us participating and calling to make sure that everyone had a ride to go to the polls on election day and uh, the last but not least I thank you for your confidence a vote in uh, elect elect electing me to serve as a fourth term as a first vice president of Dayton NAACP and also I'd like to say in this season, let us remember the reason for this season. Let us keep Christ in this season, okay? Even though we have a good time, but remember, if it had been for Christ, there would be no Christmas. Not with an X M A S, but C H R I S T M A S. Amen. I'll ask for adoption of my report at this time, please. It's been moved to accept uh, First VP Bradham's report. Is there a second? Second by third, third VP Terrell. Questions? Hearing on all those in favor, signal by saying aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Second VP Roberts. We held a very successful candidates night on September 24th. We had 23 candidates show up. We had over 140 people participate in the audience. Uh, the Deltas and the AKAs helped collect questions and they were timers for the event. For me, this year was a very excellent successful uh, story because it established a permanent relationship between the Panhellic League and uh, Montgomery County. We did several things. We established the church captains and many of the churches, something we've been trying to do for years. We had a large turnout at the candidates night. Uh, the Deltas asked me to facilitate an issues forum called Cocktails and Conversations. Uh, we had a partnership that was very fruitful and the committees we help organize, I think, will help us in our future endeavors. So I want to do a great big shout out to the Panhellic League for working with us this year. On election day, uh, we gave 27 rides to the polls, and we also did over 150 phone calls to remind people to vote and ask them if they needed a ride to the polls. Let me just give, a, give all of you a shout out in three areas. One was, uh, your calls to the senators uh, stopped Thomas Farr from being appointed to the district court. And for those of you who don't remember who Thomas Farr is, he was an attorney for Lester Maddox. And so he did everything he could to suppress the vote in North Carolina. And your calls to our state senators helped uh, remove the stand your ground provision from the bill that was pending before the state senate. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. So, Mr. President, I ask for adoption of my report with no action items. Okay, it's been probably moved in second. Second by uh, third VP Terrell. Questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Oh, question. Is there a question on the motion? This might be an addition. You are also heavily involved with the team voting project. You mentioned All right, thank you. Uh, any other on readiness? Hearing on all those in favor of signifying aye. 
Those opposed? Motion carried. Uh, third VP Terrell. Praise the Lord, NAACP. You can do better than that. Praise the Lord, NAACP. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, before I begin my report, I'd like to make a couple of acknowledgments. As you know, or if you don't know, the NAACP partners with all of the churches. And I'd like to say thank you to my pastor, Reverend Rodney Cranford. Pastor Cranford, Stan, thank you for allowing me to do what I do at First Baptist Church. Also, uh, Arnetta Gary, will you please stand? Arnetta just buried her dad on December 13th. Everyone point your hand at her and say, you are in our prayers. You are in our prayers. Thank you, Arnetta. Uh, scholarships were awarded at the 67th Freedom Fund Banquet. Uh, the scholarship applications were sent to the area high schools in Montgomery County the first week in September. And then there was a follow-up call by uh, Tracy Carr to make sure they received those scholarships. Scholarships were emailed to all the executive board members. In order for each student selected to receive the scholarship award, he or she must show proof of graduating, proof of acceptance to a college or university, and each student will receive that award at the July 2019 NAACP meeting, general membership meeting. Uh, Kevin M. Buck, a student at Stiver School for the Art, won the Speedway Scholarship for $600. He will be attending The Ohio State University. Jaden Allen Hurt, a student at Stiver School for the Art, won the Jesse O. Gooding for $1,000. He will be attending Howard University. Janelle Works, a student at Jefferson High School, won the Laverne Gooding Scholarship for $1,000. And she will be attending the University of Cincinnati. Uh, Kendall Nicole Jones, a student at Cyber for the School of Art, won the Miley O. Williams Scholarship for $1,000, and she will be attending Howard University. Now, those of you that were at the Freedom Fund Banquet will remember that was her birthday, so that was the biggest birthday gift she ever got. And then also, Tanea Bailey, a student at the Dayton Early Academy, DECA, won the Dr. Derek L. Ford Visionary Leadership Scholarship for $1,500. She will be attending the University of Dayton. Dr. President, I move my report. Second. It's been moved and properly second. Second by uh, Second VP Roberts. Questions? Hearing none, all those in favor of signify by saying aye. Those opposed, motion carried. Uh, so as these individuals are coming, uh, you can make your way down uh, the President Hayes with the Little John Jr. Youth Council and President Tanea Bailey with the Dayton Youth Council. So as you all are coming down, and then after them, we will hear from Move Forward Third Good Marshall. So if you can make your way. But as they are coming, I just want to uh, acknowledge the presence of um, Commissioner Jeff Mims, who's also a life member of the Dayton, of the Dayton Unit NAACP, stand to be recognized. And then we also have uh, Reverend Dr. Robert C. Walker, school board, stand to be recognized. Also a life member, him and his wife are both life members of the Dayton Unit NAACP. And then uh, we also have uh, Mark Wells, past potentate, Please stand to be recognized. So we partner with the Shriners and the Masons as well. Uh, so now we're going to hear from our youth and uh, President Bailey and President Hayes. And we, oh, okay, thank you very much. We have a former president of the Dayton Unit NAACP, Floyd Johnson. Please stand to be recognized. Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Reverend Isle. Hi, I'm President Bailey. Hi, my name is uh, <laughs> President Hayes. Okay, um, we participated um, and conducted several voter registration drives at the Dr. Martin Luther King March and Rally, the Black History Month program in February. Um, 2018 Women's March, the Dayton African American Cultural Festival, Juneteenth celebration, 
and some others I don't think that were on the list. And Provided school supplies at our black to school, well back to school, stay in school event. Attended the NAACP 109th Annual Convention for Training and Development Purposes. Partici participated in the festive giving at the Dayton Convention Center. This was the 11th year in a row. Donated toys and cloths to families for Christmas. We would like to move for adoption of our report. Okay, it's been probably moved and second. Uh, it was second by, I think that was second VP Roberts. Questions? Hearing on all those in favor, second by saying aye. Those opposed? Motion carried. Let's give our youth a round of applause. Okay, uh, now we're going to hear from our high school chapter. Uh, move forward, uh, Third Good Marshall. And that's by ways of their advisor, uh, Nathan Shields. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name's thank you. My name's Nathan Shields. Um, big news for us was the uh, election of myself as the new advisor at Thurgood Marshall for our outgoing advisor, Lieutenant Colonel retired Claudia Mason, who's now teaching over at Meadowdale. So she passed the torch along to me, and I'm very proud and um, excited to uh, continue what she's built with um, Dr. President Forward. And we're looking forward to a really good 2019. Uh, this year we focused on fundraising strategies for the youth and things that they're interested in doing, as well as trying to engage our underclassmen so that as we have juniors and seniors exiting, we will be able to continue with uh, freshmen and sophomores coming up interested in the NAACP. We also, with uh, Ms. Loretta Williams, actually the uh, uh, chair lady of the education committee for the NAACP, we focused on an anti-apathy case study uh, that is still ongoing at the high school. We are trying to identify areas where students are feeling that they don't want to be engaged at the school. And so we're focusing a lot on extracurriculars. That seems to be one of the things that pops up, that they want more and pertinent extracurriculars for their interests to help them stay engaged and be um, academically oriented with the school. And um, so that's pretty much all for me. Thank you so much. I move for adoption of my report. Is there a second? Second by uh, First VP Branham. Questions? Hearing none, all those in favor of signal by saying aye. Those opposed? Motion carried. Even though his president is not here, let's give Move Forward Third Good Marshall High School Chapter a round of applause. Thank you. So, uh, in this order, and if you can make your way down, uh, we're going, we want Chairman Scott Sliver, Communications, Press, and Publicity. Cedric McGee, Chair of AXO. Ina Green, Chair of Membership and Life Membership. Uh, in that order. So if you can come in that order, please. And all of the committee reports, we will actually receive all the committee reports at the end. So no need to move your reports as committee chairs. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, sir. Everybody wave. Come on. <laughs> All right. I'm the communications guy, so got to have a selfie. Uh, my name is Scott Sliver, and I'm chair of communications, press, and publicity. Um, I run the Twitter account and assist with Facebook and other issues. Um, our number of Twitter followers in 2018 went from 295 to 414. Um, I'd like to see that number up over 1,000. So if you think I'm happy with that increase, I'm not. I want it to be over 1,000 next year. That's my goal. Uh, we, I promote um, the regular monthly meetings, press conferences, activities, voter registration, election day efforts, and of course the annual Freedom Fund Banquet. We also brought attention to numerous other events and issues and concerns, way too many, uh, too, too numerous to mention here. Um, we, as an, as an account, uh, we were liked and retweeted by the president and CEO, Derek Johnson, and also had tweets liked and retweeted by the national NAACP and multiple other units all across the country. Uh, one of the highlights for me personally was assisting with the national NAACP social media team at the national conference in San Antonio. 
by providing uh, coverage for various aspects of the conference. That's a huge show of trust um, and great exposure for our unit, um, but it's certainly not as important as, as what we do right here in Dayton. Amen? Amen? It's just really cool. I mean, I got to stand this close to President Clinton, so that was pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, it was awesome. I uh, also got to write an article about the convention that ran in the Dayton Weekly newspaper and the Dayton Daily News and hosted two uh, Dayton Unit NAACP update TV shows on DATV. Those are available on YouTube. We did one about business and one about education. Those are easy to find. And there you go. That's my report. Thank you, Chairman Sliver. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, up next, we have uh, Chairman... Well, uh, in fact, hold on for a second, Chairman McGee. Uh, I will read the next report, uh, which is for our Community Coordination Committee Chair, Marvin Mitchell. Thank you, sir. You know, the vision statement of the Community Coordination Committee is to develop forums to establish open dialogues pertaining to community issues. Uh, she held a partnership with Montgomery County Development Services, Workforce Development Department, and the Panhandle Council. Uh, we held our third annual career job fair. As a result of that job fair, the Dayton Unit NAACP third annual job fair, there were 110 people, participants in attendance. Uh, 20 interviews were conducted on site. 15 people were hired in full-time positions. 18 were placed in part-time permanent positions and 25 were enrolled in a WIOA TANF training program. So uh, that was our third annual job fair, and we look forward to that job fair continuing uh, in the future. Chair Lady Mitchell uh, actually uh, has assumed another, you know, NAACP actually breeds leaders, in, in fact. Uh, and if you think about, uh, you know, Commissioner Shaw, who served as our uh, our economic our economic development committee chair uh, for a number of years. He now sits on city council or city commission. Uh, Judge Mia Wortham Spells also served for 10 years uh, as our legal redress chair. Now as a judge in Dayton Municipal Court, uh, and now uh, our own Marvin Mitchell uh, is now taking on a, a you know, basically a tremendous role with Montgomery County uh, under the new administration. So uh, we want to continue to uh, work. Uh, with the um, with the county, uh, with the city, uh, as well as with everyone else, as we do partnerships uh, to make our Dayton community strong. So, with that, uh, Chairman McGee. Uh, first of all, I want to acknowledge a couple of Axel people in the audience: uh, uh, Dr. Carl Moeller and his wife, and uh, former assistant uh, Marlene Johnson. And I would get in trouble if I don't acknowledge my mother sitting right next to them. So, all right. Uh, the AXO program uh, is a youth program. AXO, if you don't know, it stands for Afro-Academic, Cultural, Technological, and Scientific Olympics. And it sent uh, four local gold medalists to compete in a national competition, basically a national uh, uh, talent competition in San Antonio, Texas. And uh, the students were inspired uh, on their trip in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, we didn't bring any gold medals home, but we brought home a lot of wisdom. They learned in the master classes and workshops. Uh, they got to meet uh, blackish uh, sitcom artist um, Yar Shahidi and uh, got to meet uh, Kaylin Allen, the uh, syndicated comedian on uh, the Ellen DeGeneres show. And AXO is all about community. We've partnered in the past with uh, NAACP's Back to School Rally, uh, the Kwanzaa Celebration at Sinclair, and Community, uh, community Pride Cleanup. We've done power lunches with some schools. Um, so AXO uh, meets on Tuesday nights. Uh, this year we'll be meeting at Ponent. And our 
uh, last year we met at Duke Ellis. And uh, this year we'll meet, uh, I mean, we'll have our local competition on April the 6th. Uh, we had seven students last year that were awarded uh, local medals and four uh, awarded uh, gold medals to compete nationally. And so that's my report. Uh, we look to do some great things in Detroit, Michigan. All right. Uh, and another youth program uh, in the Dayton Unit NAACP's Armory. And there, there's just some pictures. That, that, we call that a bonus slide. Uh, you know, of them in action at the National Axel Competition uh, in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, Chair Lady Ina Green. So as she makes her way, uh, education is after that. So we're going to have our assistant treasurer, who is highly focused on education. Uh, and uh, so she's going to fill in for Loretta Williams, and she's going to do that report. Uh, Chair Lady Lou Dell, if you can make your way uh, over Freedom Fund. And after Lou Dell, we're going to have Reverend Dr. David Fox for criminal justice and Kathy L. Parson, uh, Chair Lady over Labor and Industry, in that order. So if you can make your way. Thanks. Good evening, everyone. Well, I'm going to start out with this is my first year as being the official membership and life membership chairperson. And, and I'm really enjoying it. It's, um, it's a challenge because I, I, I just... It's a lot to learn, but it's fun. In November 2018, which is year to date, our membership is down 0.45% versus the prior year. And I'm going to work on that with your help. November 20, 2018, year to date, we had 169 yearly regular paid members. This is the members that pay $30 a year on their expiration date and they pay that every year. It's just a regular membership and we appreciate that. November 2018, year to date, we had 60 subscribing life members. And yes. And that is a, that seems like a long time but it's really not. It goes by quickly. November 2018, year to date, there were 18 fully paid life members. And I held a membership drive at Summit Christian Church for um, a period of around three weeks, and I collected 12 memberships. That is my church, and um, I'm still working on them, so we should we should do good. Implemented a weekly reminder by inserting a communications in our, my church bulletin to ask people to renew or join the Dayton Unit NAACP. Now, as I go into this, um, I'm going to start working with some of the churches that you can also get involved in having church members join their church as the NAACP, so um, you'll be hearing from me. Now tonight, I'm doing something a little different. This is an application for the NAACP, and it's for general membership and the different life memberships. If you would like one of these forms, you can take it with you tonight, and you can get it, mail it to the NAACP, or if you've got your money tonight, you could give it to me and I'll make sure that they get it. So these are applications just for tonight. So this ends my report and I move for adoption of my report. Uh, we are going to move for adoption of all committee reports at the end. Thank you very much, Chair Lady. Okay, so um, at this time, and like I said, please, as you come up to the mic, please speak into the mic so everybody can hear you, make certain that we're all getting the information. And please, please, ladies and gentlemen, show our 
committee share some love up here. And if there's a hand clap, let's hand clap, uh, you know, and uh, so on and so forth. So we know you're engaged and not just waiting on that food over there. So, you know, Outback Steakhouse is going to be here. They ain't going nowhere. So, <laughs> all right. So we're going to have uh, Assistant Treasurer uh, Jamie to come up and give the education report. Then we're going to hear from Chair Lady Dill with Freedom Fund. Then Reverend Dr. David I. Fox with Criminal Justice. And then after that, Kathy Parson with Labor and Industry. Good evening. I'm Jamie Rippey. How are you doing this evening? Good, good. So I'm just reading the report on behalf of Loretta Williams on the Education Committee. So the Dayton NAACP moderated community meetings titled School Closings each month. Also, they facilitated a Dayton Unit Oversight Committee to make recommendations for the next steps on the proposed closing of six of um, nine schools, which the first one took place at the uh, Reverend Carter's Church. And then next, they established quarterly meetings with Superintendent Lolly and President Dr. Ford. And then we also participated in the Ohio Board of Education Content and Fairness Committee to examine and revise the state testing items. And then lastly, we participated in the Every Student Succeeds at Workshop. This is a committee report for education. Thank you. And uh, hold on for a second there. I want you all to remember this face right here. Uh, you know, she has served faithfully uh, as our assistant treasurer. Uh, she's going to be moving on to do some bigger and better things down the road. And uh, she has a heart for education. So I just want each one of you uh, to look at her and just kind of remember that name. What is your name? <laughs> oh, Jamie Rippy. Jamie Rippy. Can we say Jamie Rippy? Okay, so just remember that name down the road. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, Chair Lady Dell. Thank you, Mr. Dr. President. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. And even though we're here, we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Because I'm going to share some very important information with you. My name is Lou Dell. I think that has been said, but just in case. Um, and I struggle with the Freedom Fund Committee for the NAACP. So what I want to share with you this evening is our um, progress reports, some of the things that we have accomplished. And before I mention any of them, I want you to know that we could not have accomplished any of them without your help and your support. And always know that we thank you very much. Um, we were very fortunate this year to get a great speaker. And I know those of you that attended will attest to that. We were able to get the Reverend Dr. Wendell Anthony uh, the, as the keynote speaker <coughs> me. Out, of, um, out of Detroit. Um, did many of you get a chance to hear him? Yeah. All right, all right. You know, yes, let's give it up. And we are, we are in the process of looking for other great speakers. So if we have any great speakers even in the house right here, let us know. Or you can let, help us uh, do some research and, and, and share with us. Uh, let me just break down a few, of, um, few points for you. And I would ask you to really listen carefully uh, because I want to come back to some of them. Uh, we have different categories. And we have, for the uh, platinum level sponsorship, we received three this year. Now, we're very grateful for the three, and we couldn't make it without whatever else, whatever we have. But I must tell you that we are down a little bit. And I'm going to come back and talk a little bit about that. We have the diamond level. <coughs> um, get away. Um, I didn't even know. That we have one, and of course that's a, um, we were able to get a diamond level uh, sponsorship. The gold level, we got five. Usually we get more than that. So if you're interested in statistics, 
Um, we were down a little bit, just a little bit on that uh, 15%. And the uh, bronze level sponsorship, we received 24. We were up on that one. Um, we were up about uh, 4%. And all of this is uh, versus last year's report. Organization, uh, organizational levels. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm just getting over a cold. Um, organizational level sponsorship, oh, 24%. Oh, that helps a lot. Thank you very much. Uh, the souvenir journal ads, um, this is not included in the uh, corporate sponsorship. We got about 75 of those, and uh, that was down just about 1%. So, you know, we are grateful, and I said earlier, we're thankful. But I want to turn to you and ask you, as you listen to this stat, note that there are areas where we are down. Now, that doesn't mean that we were not working hard. We always are working hard. We need you, too, to hang in there with us. We need you, if you know of uh, any corporate sponsors, or organization. Let's talk about organization. You know, there isn't any reason that I can think of why all of these organizations are not connected with us. I'm looking at you, Mr. Potentate. But anyway, I'm looking at others too. Um, also, you know, all of our organizations, Mason and what have you, please come forward uh, next year when you receive our information. Uh, please don't hesitate. Uh, support because this is how we turn around and give back to you. We support you and all of these uh, persons here, they, they have to go for training. You don't want somebody sitting up here that don't, don't know anything uh, and then trying to run your organization. So they have to go and be trained, you know, even though he's been around a long time, but he still has to be brought up to par on what is current. And that takes money. So then that's where we turn around to you. If you know of where you work, uh, where you play, uh, or anybody that you can think of to help support the NAACP, uh, because we serve everybody, pink, black, green, white, yellow, whatever. That's what we do. So I want to again thank all of you for everything that you've done. And I look forward to working with all of you again next year. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Lady Dale. Um, so as Reverend Fox is coming up, uh, if Chairman Lepla, Chairman Winburn, and Chair Lady Smith can make their way. Chairman Lepla, Chairman Winburn, Chair Lady Smith, in that order. Chairman Fox. I'm gonna be obedient and just take my two minutes. served as uh, chair of the Civil Rights Subcommittee to the Justice Committee for the Montgomery County Jail. And matter of fact, I just came from a meeting with that just a few minutes ago. A guest lecturer for University of Dayton Criminal Justice Lecture Series, Community Police Relations. Uh, graduated from the Dayton Citizens Police Academy, which was kind of exciting after I didn't graduate from three, three police academies, but I would recommend everybody in here to go and be a part of the Dayton Police Academy uh, for the citizens, because you can learn a whole lot. Uh, guest speaker during the Ponis Career Technology Center observation of student national walkout in protest of gun violence. Uh, conducted 45 formal investigations, uh, i.e. police abuse, police misconduct, malicious prosecution, search and seizure violations, overcharging, warrant violations, uh, 43 cases closed, two cases remain open, uh, case work investigated, um, and in November of this year, we're down 24% versus previous year. That's two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chairman Fox. And that was criminal justice. Uh, so now you're gonna hear from labor and industry, Chair Lady Parson. Hi, in case. 
You didn't get my name is Kathy L. Parson, at least the L is for Lee. Okay. Um, um, I am Chair Lady of Labor and Industry, and I work closely and side by side with um, Chris Cortner. You guys might know him. He's been there for quite some time. Um, we investigate complaints for housing, education, and employment. So if you guys have any um, complaints for housing, employment, or uh, education, you will come see me or Chris. Um, I'm a paralegal as well, so um, I handle the complaints. And um, we, this year we investigated 69 cases. We resolved uh, 25 and mediated 29. So um, again, if you guys have any questions, um, need any um, issues with those three uh, things that I just mentioned, the employment, um, employment, education, and housing, you will come see me, file a complaint with our office. And again, now we have somebody who wanted to say, where'd she go? She wanted to say something else, but she done dished out on me. <laughs> All right, thank you, Chair Lady Parson. Now we're going to hear from Chairman Lepla with legal redress, then followed by Chairman Winburn, economic development, and Chair Lady Smith with housing, in that order. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm the lawyer on the executive committee. We have a legal lead redress committee, but it involves a lot of things that sound beyond redress, including in this past year reviewing information concerning the red light referendum and advising the president and executive committee on that. Uh, coordinating efforts with other organizations and the unit over the Good Samaritan Hospital closing issues, which continue, of course. Uh, attending and providing comments from a legal standpoint on various issues arising at executive committee meetings, coordinating with other executive committee members and other members of the organization on issues outside the executive committee meeting. Late in the year, we were involved in election protection efforts, coordinated with the national NAACP and with other national voter protection organizations. That day, we solved dozens of problems and feel like we performed a service which could not have occurred but for Second Vice President Roberts bringing us food and coffee throughout the day, so thank you. Uh, and the efforts during that election were outstanding. We elected three judges in Montgomery County, defeated two incumbents, and have finally elected the first African-American male to the general division, <laughs> Gerald Parker, who's going to be an outstanding judge. We also elected two Supreme Court justices, including the only second elected African-American female to the Ohio Supreme Court. So congratulations to all of you and all voters. Thank you, Chairman Lepla. Chairman Winburn. Thank you, Mr. President, and good evening, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Roland Winburn. I'm the chair of the Economic uh, Development uh, Committee. Um, in the last uh, 12 months, uh, we've had a number of individuals uh, who served on our committee. Uh, some of those individuals uh, come from business, uh, they're business owners, uh, they're international uh, people who are dealing with trade over in Africa. Uh, we have a person also with the City of Dayton and their Human Relations Council dealing with business development, uh, a realtor, uh, CPA, uh, also uh, a, uh, individuals with the social services, uh, Parity, Urban League, and the Dayton um, uh, Chamber of Commerce Minority Businesses, all cons cons uh, are members of that particular uh, committee. Uh, in the last 12 months, we've been uh, talking with a number of people from academia, uh, from government agencies, with economic direct, uh, development directors from regional municipalities uh, west of I-75. We've collected facts, including published uh, community profiles, economic indicators, and emerging trends. Um, we also included uh, in the committee's review uh, with specific information regarding culture and environment, age, job skills and talent or workforce development, cultivating entrepreneurs, social economic status and building wealth through home ownership and other real estate matters, retirement and investment planning, and intergenerational wealth distribution. 
in July, we presented a briefing to the uh, general membership. Uh, the committee emphasized the process. Uh, we wanted it to be data-driven and that the goals and objectives would be both measurable and sustainable. They also wanted goals and objectives to be focused, intentional, and predictive. Another necessary component was to incorporate three critical elements of the National NAACP Economic Development Initiatives. They were to empower, ensure, and grow. Um, in the forthcoming weeks, it is expected that the leadership of the Dayton unit would agree whether to support the goals and objectives, and similarly, how they would be implemented over an expected period of time. Once completed, a booklet will be completed and made available in the upcoming year. Uh, we're now talking with some journalism students from the University of uh, Dayton, Central State University, Sinclair Community College, and perhaps Wright State University, who will be approached to assist in completing this booklet. I want to thank you very much and uh, uh, for this, this past year and uh, for all the efforts that we did this past year and look forward to working with this committee again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman Wimburner. Um, as Chair Lady Smith of Housing makes her way, uh, we want Chairman Ayo Ngundu Yule over International Affairs uh, to make his way, uh, and Chair Lady Gary over uh, Get Out the Vote. And following her will be Chair Lady Hill, Felicia Hill over Help. So if you all can make your way in that order, Chair Lady Smith. Good evening and happy holidays. You all need to wake up a little bit, okay? <laughs> get, get excited. <laughs> As uh, President Ford said, my name is Deborah Smith. I'm the chairperson of housing for the Dayton unit of NAACP. Um, I want to, uh, well, I should say this too. I've been the chairperson of housing for six and a half long years. Can I get a hand? <laughs> No, no, I'm just joking, but I've really enjoyed it, and I, and I have been re-elected for another two years. Um, looking forward to serving you guys again. Um, also, I wanted to uh, just introduce myself. I think it's kind of important to, for you all to know who I am. Um, I retired from Wright-Patterson Air Force Base as a contracting officer back in 2009. Had 36 years of government service. Um, okay, thank you. I, back in 1986, I started my own real estate, uh, residential real estate investment company, which is still ongoing. Uh, so basically, I'm a landlord, all right? And um, then also, um, I am, uh, let me see what else I had to say there. Well, served as the chairperson of the uh, NAACP. And... Um, some of the things that I've accomplished this year is the uh, general membership meeting. I moderated a workshop entitled, Let's Get Our Houses in Order, uh, from a financial perspective, okay? And basically, I had two speakers come in, Brandon McLean, who is our own um, Montgomery County recorder. He spoke about the fraud alert notification system. How many of you all have heard of that? Okay, great. And basically what it is, uh, he implemented a database whereby if someone is tampering with your deeds or your mortgage, you will be notified immediately, okay? And um, so but what you have to do is go to the recorder's website, um, uh, put in your, your contact information, property address, and so forth, and then if somebody ever tampers with your deed or mortgage or whatever, you will be notified. Also, the second speaker was Michael Grooms, who was a financial advisor with Prudential, and he spoke about the importance of credit. Having good credit is very important, because if you don't have good credit, you're paying a lot more money for your car loans, uh, your home loans, etc. Okay, so it's very important to pay your bills on time. Okay? Can I get a hand for that? Now, my ch charts are a little bit out of order, but um, I, um, back in April, we had a Earth Day celebration. Every year, we go out and we clean up the Five Oaks neighborhood. And I'm telling you, it's a mess. 
for those of you who know where Five Oaks is. But every year we do that, we spend about four hours cleaning it up, um, along with the University of Dayton students, Wright State students, DECA Prep is another participant, and of course, the city of Dayton, because without their trash trucks, we couldn't throw all the trash away in the trucks there. And uh, I want to uh, recommend, I mean also recognize rather, uh, my granddaughter, she's not here, Paris Clark. She's only like seven years old and she was getting so tired of picking up the trash. She was like, Granny, can we go home? But we were out there for four hours cleaning up. And then also every year, this is our fifth year of doing that. And Cedric McGee, he's always a participant. So thank you, Cedric. And lastly, uh, back in September, I took it upon myself to ride um, what, what is called ride along with a city inspector, uh, just, just to get an idea of what the, our neighborhoods are looking like. So it was like a two hour ride. Uh, we went to the various neighborhoods and you know we saw all the blighted homes. And I know the city of Dayton is doing a fantastic job with the downtown. Wouldn't you all agree? We had the Levitt Pavilion, and we had hotels, businesses coming up. Um, however, our neighborhoods are still is a little challenging. We need to do some more things with the neighborhoods. Um, and what I may do next year is have one of the uh, managers from the city of Days Dayton, uh, the housing manager, come out and speak about what they are actually doing in terms of uh, you know, tearing down some of these blighted homes. Uh, and, and I know this year for a fact, they have done a wonderful job in tearing down a lot of the blighted homes that have been sitting there for years in some of the neighborhoods. But Ken Jackson was a housing inspector. One of the things he told me that they actually uh, inspect over 10,000 houses in a year. That is a lot. And guess how many inspectors they have? 10. 10 inspectors for the whole city of Dayton. So they can no longer be proactive people. You guys are gonna have to get on your phones and call them 333-4800. 333-4800 if you see violations. And then they also have a Dayton Deliver app where you can go for these young people to get on their apps. You can do, you can also uh, report violations that way as well. And uh, so that's all of my report, but I wanted to leave you guys with something. Uh, that I read recently and I thought it was so profound uh, is a quote from Thomas Monson. And it says, the past is behind. So don't live in your past, okay? The past is behind. Learn from it. The future is ahead. Prepare for it. Especially young people in, you know, going to school. Prepare for your future because it's going to come before you know it. Um, and then lastly, the present is here. Live it. And that's all I have. Thank you, and you all have a wonderful holiday. All right, thank you. Chairman Ayo Ongundu Yile, International Affairs, uh, followed by Chair Lady uh, Gary, get out the vote, followed by Chair, I'm sorry, Chair, Chair Lady Gary, get out the vote, Chair Lady Hill, help, and rounding us off, uh, Chairman Williams uh, with. Armed Services and Veteran Affairs, so if you can make your way. Good evening to all. And Merry Christmas and Happy New Year in advance. Uh, I'm in charge of international affairs, and uh, just to share with you some of the information I shared with the community this past, I mean this year. Uh, during the month of uh, February, I traveled back home to Nigeria on a personal visit and I spoke to uh, Dr. Olagere, and that is based on the meeting that we had in March, whereby I moderated the Dayton Unit NACP meeting, uh, bringing uh, Honorable Victor Bashuyi to speak to us about the United African States. And the president of the uh, United African States, 54 countries of Africa, is Dr. Olagere. So I spoke to him while I was in Nigeria with regards to the program. And I have spoken to Elijah Cummings, who is a congressman in Washington, D.C., with regards to the United African States. One of the things I want to share with you today is this. United African States comprises of 54 African countries, 
coming together. And they have started this back in 19, I mean 2010. And a lot of uh, African head, I mean head of state are actually part of this program. What they want to develop is more businesses within the continent and more businesses with <clears throat> people outside the country, I mean the continent, and to give folks opportunity to travel to those countries without even visas so that you can leave here and go to London. You want to be able to do the same thing going to South Africa, Johannesburg, or Lagos, Nigeria, or anywhere in Africa. So we moderated the meeting here in March this year, and we shared the information with the community. So we'd like for you to stay in touch with us with regards to that. I attended the NACP convention, uh, National Convention in San Antonio, where I met with Hillary Shelton and Dr. David Goodley. These are the two front leaders in Washington in international affairs. And we discussed further programs to move some of these programs forward with the United African State. Um, <clears throat> attended the Dr. Martin Luther King banquet here, and I tried to involve a lot of organizations that are internationally uh, connected here. The Nigerian Women Culture Organization were there to represent them and themselves, and I plan to bring more of these groups to our future programs. And we have done the same thing with the uh, NACP before, and we're going to do that again. Um, I share with the community, I share with the community action alert, uh, NACP highlighting the issue of the present administration separating children from parents at the southern border. You are aware of that. I think one, do um, one girl died just about two or three days ago. The president of NACP, Derrick Johnson, has actually labeled this as immoral and un-American. Uh, lastly, shared information with the NACP family here with the organization's continued support of uh, lifting trade and travel bans on Cuba. If you remember, uh, President Obama was in Cuba before he left office. And he <clears throat> thought that things were going to follow in that realm and broaden you know, the program. However, uh, we are actually at a standstill right now. And hopefully, things will move in a better direction in the future. Just to let you know where Derrick Johnson stands, he is behind lifting this and having a communication with our brothers and sisters in Cuba. And that's the end of my report. Thank you. <laughs> Shall Lady Gary, get out the vote. Get out the vote. Is everyone in this room a registered voter? Wonderful. That makes my job easy. For the year 2018, I'm responsible for getting the vote out. So I conducted PSAs, which is public service announcements. I'm a church captain at my church, so I did my first PSA at my church, which is to inform and educate the people to vote. Then I also spoke to my class at our class picnic at St. Clair Park. And then I collaborated with my state president at the Dayton Boys and Girls Club Community Outreach Day. They allowed me to do vote PSA over there. So I discussed vote, which gives us victory over the enemy. So if you are a vote, you become a voter. Then you have voted, and then we all are voting. <laughs> a little rap for you. <laughs> Conducted voter registration drives at the following. Huber Heights Community Room for three days. However, we had a few people to show up, but the community room was in the police department. So, people weren't too interested. <laughs> I also did the Dayton African American Cultural Festival. We had quite a bit of voter registration there. And at the McIntosh Park Community Day, collaborated with Eric and Stacy, and we got voter registration there. And it was a good community outreach program. They ate, I ate, and they received clothing. 
And of course, I had to hit the ground running, passing out flyers and leaflets. I was at Shiloh, I was at the Dayton Boys and Girls Club, anywhere I went, Kroger's, you saw a flyer from me. So I did Huber Heights in Dayton, and I also did Souls to the Polls to get people to come out and vote on the general election. Thank you very much. May we all have a wonderful holiday, and we must vote. Our lives are at stake. Thank you. Chair Lady Hill, health. Hi, you all. Can you hear me? I know you can, but anyway. Um, I'm Felicia Hill, the chair of the health uh, committee, and I thank you for each and every one of you coming out. And I wanted to thank the NAACP because each person up here is a volunteer. Understand that. So, but my report comes to you today where I um, hosted and moderated the Dayton NAACP um, community meeting, ceasefire, meaning who's marching for our youth? You know, who, who's out crying out when there's violence against one another? So I marched, uh, um, hosted that and had restorative justice. You guys say restorative justice. Make sure that you look it up because it's instrumental and it's impactful on renewing and also making sure that those individuals who have committed cr criminal activity, they're just not thrown away. They're also able to see the impact that they've made in the community in a negative way. So what this does, it, it creates an environment for those people who have been perpetrated the crime on, those persons who perpetrated the crime, and to bring wholeness back to the situation, restorative justice. So I also participated with um, Alicia Pagan and Trotwood Madison. She is the Spanish teacher there, which is the Mark, oh, Dayton Mark, there you go. Welcome, thank you. Between uh, Dayton, um, Dar Dr. Martin Luther King and Cesar Ch Chavez. Now Chavez was a, a, a Hispanic worker who migrant, I mean who organized the migrant workers. So we're trying to champion a day to get him recognized too because that's another unsung hero who modeled after Dr. Dr. Martin Luther King's model of nonviolence but also uh, organizing. Now last but not least, my two minutes, um, Partner with the Community Engagement Branch of Everyone Reach One, Dayton Montgomery County Infant Mortality Task Force. You guys, Montgomery County is number four in the nation for infant mortality. Um, check this out. For every one um, a Caucasian baby that's birthed, I mean, that's dies, three of African Americans, and that's including those who are highly educated. So it has an impact on our community. What is infant mortality? I'm going to tell you real quick and then I'm going to sit down. From birth to one years old, those babies who have died. We can prevent this. So therefore, I have partnership with that to raise awareness because it has an impact. Our stress levels of African American women is affecting the birth of our children and the survival of our children. And our children are our future. Restore to justice. Thank you, Chair Lady Hill. Chairman Williams, Armed Services and Veteran Affairs. Thank you, Mr. President. And good evening, everyone. My name is Terrence Williams. I'm a retired Air Force. I would like to take this opportunity to recognize our vets in the house. So if we have some vets in the house, please, be, please stand and be recognized. Thank you for your service. We moderated a meeting last month. The title was Services Available and Provided to Local Veterans. We had leadership from five different agencies including the director of the VA. We had a lot of question and answering sessions and they provided a lot of information to our veterans on resources available to them in the area. I think uh, we'll continue to do that each year for our Veterans Month. Also provided resume writing assistance to veterans seeking federal employment jobs. Uh, my background is in HR and I provide that assistance. So if you know of anyone looking for assistance in that area, please contact the NAACP and they'll get a hold of me on that. I participated in activities involving veterans at the Dayton VA in the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. I serve an executive committee at American Legion, post 776, and we all know the, the Legion helps our veterans in different areas and services. I also serve in the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base 
Career Development Board, where I monitor how they uh, represent, make sure they have fair representation for their programs and activities on base. And that concludes my report, Mr. President. Thank you, Chairman Williams. So you've heard all the various committee reports, um, and uh, I entertain a motion at this time to receive the committee reports. So who is that moved by? Moved by uh, Commissioner Mims, second by Sergeant Arms Ellington. Questions? Yes. Dr. President, I just have one comment. For those of you who don't know, I chaired the souvenir booklet with the help of our great Dr. President. However, there was a comment made about uh, Amor Temple and our potentate. And for the record, Amor Tem Temple took out an ad as well as a purchase ticket for the uh, Freedom Fund Banquet. So I don't want you to leave here thinking that Amor Temple and the potentate did not do anything. Thank you. All right. Any other unreadiness? Okay, uh, hearing in all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Those opposed, motion carried. Thank you very much. And, and a lot of times people think or try to hold the NAACP in a small little box and think that all we do is casework or you may see me on TV or you may read some that I said inside of the news. But as you can see, the organization is a lot larger than just what you may, the snippet you may see on TV or what you may read in the newspaper. There are more committees than there is a president of this organization. And let's give these committee chairs a hand for the work that they do for this organization. And that's in addition to the ones who are not committee chairs. So if you are not a committee chair and you serve on the executive committee, can you just stand where you are and be recognized? If you serve on the executive committee and you're not a committee chair. Those are the individuals that make the wheels turn at the Dayton unit in the NAACP. Uh, unfinished business, as you can see, uh, we still have on here uh, the house located. We have a house that located at 1732 West 1st Street. Uh, we're looking for someone. If you know anybody uh, that would like to demo, uh, demolish that house for us for free, uh, you know that would be uh, great. So we can use that land for productive use. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a house that uh, really, uh, really just needs to be torn down and leveled. And then we can use that, that we basically can repurpose that land and or think about selling uh, that land uh, you know, as, as is. Uh, we were not supposed to, and just for the record, since we are being recorded, uh, that house was uh, actually, uh, we acquired that house in 2006, not under the leadership of President Ford, it was under a prior administration. Because the reason I say that is the NAACP is not supposed to own any property, but this was from a prior administration. So just for the record on that. So if you know anybody uh, that uh, want to, uh, that is interested in or has a demolition company that they wouldn't mind doing that for us, that would be greatly appreciated. You can just call our office and let us know. Uh, now we're rounding out to the end here so that we can get on to the tasty food of Outback Steakhouse. And, uh, and before I forget, hey, Andy, where's Andy at? Andy and staff. Okay, you know, this is Andy Adair. Andy Adair is the managing partner at the Outback Steakhouse on Miller Lane. And I just want to make, and he's been doing this for, for at least about the past four or five years uh, in partnership. So. Please, sir, please, ma'am, please support his business at an Outback Steakhouse on Miller Lane. Uh, you know, and uh, Andy, once again, we appreciate you. Let's show him and his staff some appreciation. Uh, as you can see on the agenda, it says the 2018 annual uh, branch election ballot, uh, Dayton Unit NAACP. Uh, we have our ballot here. Uh, the Little John Junior Youth Council, we have their ballot here. Uh, the Dayton Youth Council, uh, I don't know if they have their ballot ballot or not. And then the Move for Third Good Marshall High School chapter. Uh, do you have your ballot? No, no, okay. You, you'll take care of that later. Okay, so, so for the Dayton Unit NAACP, 
uh, we are uh, it's being recommended by our leadership team here and our VPs. Uh, there's seven, we can only pick seven people. Uh, for, and these are national board seats. Uh, so with the national board seats, uh, there's actually eight names on here and we only can choose seven. Uh, it's being recommended that these seven names uh, that will go forward from the Dayton Unit NAACP. Uh, Catherine Eglin, Scott Esdell, James Gallman, Leonard James, Howard Jefferson, Jesse Turner, Richard Womack. And then for Region 3, uh, we can only pick, we are in Region 3. There are seven regions in Region 3. We are known as Midwest Region 3. And that, uh, that is Wisconsin, Michigan, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, West Virginia, and Kentucky. So uh, w once a year they actually elect somebody to serve regionally. And, uh, and th so there's two names on the ballot. We can only choose one. And our, once again, our executive leadership is, uh, so the two names is Teresa Haley and Wendell Harris. Uh, we did get information from Teresa Haley and uh, the, uh, the leadership is recommending Teresa Haley. So at this time, uh, I move for adoption of our ballot. Uh, and uh, so I move for adoption of our ballot. Well, just move, I I'm just, Okay, is there a second? It's been probably moved in second to accept uh, the names that we just stated. Questions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed? Motion carried. Um, let me just look at the Little John Jr. Youth Council's ballot. So on the Little John Jr. Youth Council's ballot, uh, so I want to ask uh, Madam President and their advisor, uh, you all have uh, the same ballot with the exception of the Region 3 representative. Uh, you know, so as I look at this ballot, are, you know, are you all wanting to do the same names that we did as an adult unit? Talking to the advisor and the, uh, and the president. I can't hear anybody. Did they say yes? Oh, do you have to answer today? No. What? What'd you say? Oh, well, we were hoping to get through our annual meeting to do it, yes. But you don't have to. Do you have a meeting schedule, another meeting schedule? Okay, good. All right. Uh, so with that, uh, we'll move forward, uh, you know, to our award presentations. And um, it, but before I go there, so 2019 calendar of events. You all should have received, if you actually at the door, you should have received a 2019 calendar of events. It should be a double-sided sheet th that gives you uh, all of our meeting dates. And if you look at those meeting dates, you will see that. Uh, on the fourth, basically primarily on the fourth Monday of every month is our general membership meeting. And if you look at that uh, calendar events, you will notice that it talks about the committee chair that's going to actually be presenting. So for instance, in, on January 28th, communications press and publicity will be presenting uh, in that uh, particular month. Then if you look at February 25th, legal redress presentation. So. Each one of our committee chairs are charged with actually coming up with their own guest speakers, uh, their own topic, and then they will discuss and moderate a particular meeting. So we're informing, educating, and empowering the community to make good uh, decisions. So, uh, so you should have that. And then the Dayton Unit NAACP 52nd, 52nd inauguration ceremony is going to be January 10th, 2019. The location is yet to be determined. Uh, we used to have it at the RTA Cultural Center, but uh, from my understanding, that is now closed down, so we need to find another location. Our next executive committee meeting date is January 22nd, and our next monthly community meeting is going to be on January the 28th, in which all citizens are welcome to attend. Uh, so with that, uh, in your war presentations, I actually have four awards uh, to present here this evening. And, and, oh, and then our secretary just uh, reminded me as well, there's something that says she 
uh, or the, I, I guess we overlooked on the agenda. I'm sorry about that. So we'll get back to that too. So with that, um, we have a life membership award. And if we can have the president of the Little John Junior Youth Council to come up, uh, President Hayes, uh, if you can come up for a second. Uh, and uh, as she is coming, I want to get to these other two awards. And um, well, President Hayes, come on up here, President Hayes. She's going to present this award to somebody here today. This is actually a life membership award. Tell the name of that. Elena Brooklyn Tisdale. Can a representative come up? And as she is coming, uh, you know, this is our treasurer's mother, and uh, she has been very, very, very vigilant at asking her people from down south to actually get life memberships in the Dayton unit in the BACP. So, uh, so we certainly appreciate you. Uh, you know, it's actually, this is probably about the fifth one uh, uh, you know, she's done. So I'll let you present this uh, to her, and you all can take a picture right there. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, I, you know, thank you for all you do. We certainly appreciate you working with your family way down in Alabama to do that for our youth. Thank you. Huntsville, yep. Alabama. Huntsville, Alabama. All right. Um, can you hear her now? I have three community outreach awards. Uh, this first one uh, says Dayton Unit NAACP Community Outreach Award. Uh, presented to Jamie Simpson. Is Jamie Simpson here? I think I've seen her come in. Jamie Simpson. It says, as she's coming, this says, in recognition of the leadership you provided on the photo enforcement camera ballot initiative spearheaded by the Dayton Unit NAACP, the effort you put in collecting signatures was absolutely remarkable. Advocating for the civil and human rights of all Americans is simply the right thing to do. Signed by Clara May Thompson, Secretary, Dr. Derek L. Forward, President. Thank you very much uh, for your hard efforts. You know, even though it didn't, you know, we didn't get where we wanted to go, but your work in doing this initiative did not go unnoticed, and we appreciate you. Thank you. And in his role as state uh, president, you know, our two VPs, come on up. And, and also our secretary, since her name is on the plaque. <laughs> and our other two officers, come on up. Here you go. Here you go. Okay. Y'all stay on up here for a second. Oh, yeah. oh good. Uh, uh, this next award, uh, actually these next two awards, are basically almost the same award. But what I want to say about this is when it comes to activism, uh, you know, sometimes you may have somebody that may punt the ball, and then you may have somebody that may then advance the ball. So you may have a quarterback that throws the ball for five yards, and then that wide receiver takes that ball uh, on to the touchdown. So where I'm going with this is, we have two different people that we would like to recognize uh, for their work on something. And we're gonna bring that forth here in just a second. 
But this says Dayton Unit NAACP Community Outreach Award. Can you hold that for a second? Presented to Nicole Miller. If you can come up, Nicole Miller. And then also, Dayton Unit NAACP Community Outreach Award presented to Jamika Garrison. Jamika, if you can come up for a second, please. And uh, let's see, because we want to. Well, I want to read this, and then we go get it, and then we take the picture. Uh, this says, Dayton Unit NAACP Community Outreach Award presented to Nicole Miller. Uh, you know, there was a conversation that was held uh, between these two young ladies. And in that conversation, Nicole brought something up to Jamaica. Uh, you know, something that she experienced in uh, Chicago, Illinois. So the seed was planted. So she was a quarterback, the seed was planted. But then you had to have somebody to advance the ball. And that's where Jamika Garrison comes into play. Amongst their conversation, uh, she advanced that ball, and as a result of her advancing that ball, uh, I'm gonna get some here in one second, but this says, in recognition of the leadership you provided as it relates to the closing of the Audi grocery store, in the West Town Shopping Center. Uh, your activism is the reason why many citizens have access to a pop and shop grocery cart today. Advocating for the civil and human rights of all Americans is simply the right thing to do. And for those of you who don't know what this pop and shop grocery cart is, we're about to show you. So Nicole Miller, thank you for your activism. Jamika Garrison, thank you for your activism. And if you see one of these rolling around Dayton, Ohio somewhere, and I'm quite certain you've seen them in different places, but it's because these two young ladies worked together when that store closed uh, to ensure, you know, yeah, we, didn't, we couldn't stop it from closing, but we did get a nugget. And that nugget is this for our seniors who need to go get groceries other places. and may not have a car but they can put it inside this grocery cart uh, to ensure that they have and have access to food and the other items that they need. So ladies, we appreciate you for that. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. Well, and and just to let you know, uh, you know, as part of my report, uh, I mentioned inside of my report it was the name of uh, in, you know of an organization, and that organization was Neighborhood Over Politics, started by three women. Uh, and I see the other one is here today, Crystal uh, Turner. Uh, and if you can stand up, is that right? Oh, oh that's her mama. Oh my goodness, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, not Crystal. Shanice Turner, I don't know why I said Crystal. Well, I know why I said Crystal because I worked with her mother before I knew her at, the, uh, at, at a uh, center, at a, um, what you call that? A, uh, what kind of center was that? It was a computer center, a computer center out in Trotwood. So Shanice Turner, please stand to be recognized. So Shanice Turner, and then also um, the other young lady who, who's with y'all group is jo Joelle Jones. 
So those three young ladies made up the neighborhood over politics. But uh, I, I would just say for anybody who has the courage to stand up and lead, continue to stand up and lead, and do its place inside of your heart, and uh, it'll pay off in the end. Uh, so with that, I think we come to the conclusion of our meeting. Uh, it is now 8 o'clock p.m. We didn't make the 7.30, but, uh, oh, that's right. Okay, so hold on for a second. Our secretary has something. Okay, sorry about that. All right, one more time again. This, what I'm about to present is very interesting. So we all like Dr. President Derek Ford, right? Right? Come on, give it up for the man, right? Sure we do. So I don't know if you recognize this voice or not, but there was an NAACP presidential survey that went out not once, not twice, but three times. And it may have annoyed you. It was me. With that being said, there was a question. And the question was, overall, do you approve of the job that President De Dr. Derek Ford, L. Ford is doing as the president of the NAACP and the direction he is leading the organization in? Right? You remember that? OK. So some of you, a lot of you, did take time out to respond. So in all confidentiality, I am the person, I am that secret elf who found out what those results look like. So, as far as the executive committee results go, drum roll please. The presidential approval rating was 97%. Now, you know Dr. Forward was looking for 100, right? And that's okay because he works just that hard. So I was really shocked to get the results back for 97%. Because what that says to us as a community or to the executive committee, there was just one person who does not approve of the leadership and the direction in which he has taken us. But that's okay. We're going to work on you, whoever you are. All right. As it goes uh, with the general membership results. Drum roll, please. Jamie, are you ready? President Forward. Here we go. 100. Yes. 100%. Congratulations. Yes, he is definitely doing it. So that will conclude the results of the survey. But now, that may have taken care of one or two of you in here, but somebody still did not choose to use their voice. And because you did not, it's okay. Secretary's gonna give you one more time. Y'all putting me to work, but it's okay. I don't mind doing it for the president. So if you did not take advantage of that last robocall that I've just put out, tonight is the night. Don't feel bad if you didn't. We're not, we not, you know, trying to put you out there. But if you did not get a chance to vote and you want to be heard, then this is your opportunity. If you did not get a chance to vote or respond, please raise your hand. And the guys in the blue shirt, security will bring it to you. Once security does that, it's confidential, right? Raise your hands up high. It's okay. We're not going to arrest you. It's a vote. It's a voice. We will not arrest you for that. Security, let me see my hands. Hurry now, the food is getting cold. Okay, so even if you don't raise your hand, you can always tug their shirts later on as we are fellowshipping, that's fine. And you see this beautiful box there? Jamie, go stand next to the beautiful box. Be quick, girl, work it out. That's the exercise coming out, let's do it. Okay, pick it up, Jamie. Come on, use those legs. <laughs> okay. okay, so the pretty box is confidentiality. So once you have completed it, you can lay it inside of the beautiful box. Okay, that's all you have to do. It's just that simple. I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> all right, thank you very much. And uh, sorry I missed that uh, at the beginning. Uh, I probably was kind of scared what the results was going to be. That's why I probably skipped it. Uh, 
but okay. All right, but anyway, um, this brings us to uh, you know, the last item on our agenda. So now we're ready for our our meal prepared by Outback Steakhouse. So the Dayton Unit NAACP 2018 meeting, annual meeting is adjourned.